Have you ever shopped online, found something that looked amazing on a model, but weren't sure if it would look good on you? Imagine if you could try it on virtually before spending any money, waiting for it to arrive, only to be disappointed and go through the hassle of returning it and leaving it at the bottom of your closet. Focus is powered by the Automatic 1111 interface and uses the latest Stable Diffusion XL model. And while both are things you can install yourself on your computer, you need to meet the system requirements in order to do so, and not everyone has the means to meet those demands. Apart from that, the layout found on Focus isn't exactly the same, and there are two tiers to choose from. The free tier, that limits you to the bare minimum, that is, all you can do is generate random images, and the $9.99 tier that grants you access to the more advanced tools, and what most of you are likely here to see. So diving into the playground part of the website, you can see a list of models here. If you were doing this with Stable Diffusion offline, you'd be downloading all of these, but I imagine these are chosen by Focus as the optimal selection. It says here that Automatic 1111 Stable Diffusion Web UI for STXL V1.0 powered by Prudia. Probably why it looks different than your box standard Automatic 1111 install, which is powered by Gradia. Beneath the list of different models, we've got a prompt and negative prompt. For the uninitiated, the negative prompt is everything you don't want in your eventual image. In this example here, the developer evidently wanted a photorealistic portrait of a beautiful model in space, and not some ugly cartoon monster. There's a list of sampling methods here, but you don't really need to fuss over these unless you're struggling to get any decent results no matter what you do. We will change it later when we get into in-painting, but for now, let's just leave it. To the right of this, we've got sampling steps. If you think of the sampling method as how the AI iterates upon itself to form an image, sampling steps is how many iterations happen to mould the final result. Older versions of Stable Diffusion generally required more of those iterations to get a fairly detailed image, but the quality of Stable Diffusion XL is comparable to Dolly 3 also referred to as Microsoft Designer. This image right here is only using 20 steps, as you can see here. If you change either batch size or batch counts, really make sure you keep an eye on it. Now I can't remember which one is which, but one setting will let you generate multiple images. Like say you wanted five to see which one you liked best, and the other will multiply that batch of images. So you can imagine why you need to be extra careful if you're paying to generate more than one image. I don't think I need to explain height and width, but CFG scale is how creative you want the AI to be with your prompt. So now let's level up to the advanced tier and see what changes. At first, you might find this to be even more basic than the playground tab on the free tier, but will we not? We can click input image and advanced down here and it will expand on the interface to include all the bells and whistles we were promised. To the right here, or bottom depending on your device, we've got more preamble, styles, model selection, and advanced, which houses the CFG scale, a sharpness feature, and options for control net, which we will also get into later. Now to the bottom of the interface, or slightly higher depending on your device, we've got some extra features that mostly take images from your computer. You can use your own images to influence the output, you can in-paint or out-paint, so you can modify parts of the image without affecting anything else. You can also collect metadata from the images and have the AI describe an image. I don't know why people would need them, but they are there. I think something I neglected to mention here is that if we look towards the random box here and disable it, we'll have a random number. Let's say you've just generated an image of a woman with long blonde hair and while the composition is perfect, you weren't expecting her to be wearing glasses. Well, by freezing the seed number in place instead of letting the AI generate it randomly, you can add glasses to the negative prompts and have the exact same image be generated again, but without the glasses. In painting isn't perfect, so if you find yourself in a situation where you need to make an alteration, try doing it this way first. Preset up here will be your best friend, as one could easily become overwhelmed with all the different settings that aren't really explained. From a glance though, we can choose whether we want to prioritise speed, quality, or whatever hyper SD and extreme speed are. The batch sliders seem to be collated to just image number, and you can convert to PNG, JPG, or the one you always have to convert from because your software doesn't recognise it. With style, 
There's way too many to go over, but you can see a small preview if you hover over it, and a search bar if you have a vague idea on what the keyword might be. Personally, I think the base model, refiner, and lower aren't worth worrying too much over beyond what the preset will do. So with all that out of the way, let's make use of some of the features here. The use that I'm going to put, as I mentioned at the start, will be to try and clothe. So let's jump on over to focus here and make sure both image input and advanced are enabled. There'll be another advanced button here for us to enable as well. And this activates the stop at and wait options. Both of these options tell the AI how much we want our image to influence the final output. Remember when I told you that the image will iterate on itself based on how many steps we chose? Well, the more we increase the slider on the left, the longer it will be remembered by the AI before it just starts iterating purely on what it's got already. The weight will be the balance between what it randomly generates and your image. So let me give you an example here, and we'll use this lovely red shirt. I'll raise the one on the left pretty high, about 0.9, and leave weight around the middle. Make sure the image prompt is still enabled here, it should be by default. As for the prompt, we'll put something generic like male model standing on the street. We could also add the item of clothing to the prompt. By default it looks like it's set to give you two images, which is fine by me. One thing you can appreciate about this is that you don't need to remove the background in Photoshop. If you decide you need to shrink it though later in Photoshop, then you might want to remove the background as there will be a huge contrast between the actual background and white space, but by default it's fine. Remember to change the aspect ratio as well, something that gives you more height than width. From this point it's probably worth going over the other options under each image, like Pyro Kenny, CPDS and Face Swap. In this example, we can use Pyrocunny on the second image if we need a more detailed look at the piece of clothing, or if you want to add a similar shirt for some slight variation. Face swap will prioritise everything around the person, which is why it's called a face swap. If you're using a selfie though and need 100% accuracy, you're potentially better off using in painting, and I'll show you how to accomplish that in a second. We can avoid this, so don't let it bog you down. But CPDS stands for Contrast Preserving Decolorization, and it will prioritise objects found in the image. If you want to use a picture of yourself so that you can see what looks good on you, delete the face swap if you still have it. We don't need it anymore. Now go to the panel on the right and click Advanced, then enable Developer Debug Mode. From here, go to Control and enable Mixing Image Prompt and InPaint. With me so far? Good. So if we go back down to the bottom and click in paint or out paint, we're simply going to paint over our existing clothes. In this example, I used a screenshot from one of my first videos where I demonstrated how to use generative AI to create a new background. Using this technique, I've gotten some rather good results. But remember, it's not perfect and you may want to tinker around with the sliders. Something to remember too is that results can vary on how accurate it is to your body type and adding matches with the model's body type won't fix that unfortunately. With the content on my other half, always get content when it comes to AI. I included her in the results too, and I would say it turns out quite well. Maybe I'll generate some more results and try different genders and body types to some royalty free music, I don't know. But hey, if you did enjoy what I had to demonstrate in this video, I would very much appreciate a like and subscribe. I hope you all have a pleasant week, and thank you for watching. Bye now.